Hey guys, so I'm back now with the Alto Evo. Um, I want to do a follow-up test with a, doing a return to home accuracy test because I was not able to do that in my original review, mostly because the video was getting so long. It, I was doing my flight, you know, the battery was getting kind of low. So I want to do that today. I hope to come back in the future and also do a waypoint mission test. But for today, we're just going to do a quick return to home accuracy test. Now the precision landing is enabled. That's always enabled by default. Um, I don't see a reason why I'm able to turn that off, but that's using the downward cameras to help you know recognize the ground to aid and assist you know adjustments before it comes down to the ground lands. Obviously, the uh, the launch pad here is going to be a good uh, recognition for it, so hopefully it'll be really good and precise. And most of the time, it is really really good in my previous uh, test with that. Now, this is flashed with the newest uh, firmware from Altel that was just released, you know, within the last week, and so it's all up to date uh, they, they added you know some uh, tweaks and they added like a ludicrous mode I'm not gonna be flying that ludicrous mode that's actually gives you the ability to fly 45 miles per hour the drone is quite twitchy in that mode and it causes the gimbal to shake and that kind of freaked me out the first time that, that happened because I was like what's going on with the gimbal but it's there's nothing actually wrong they just need to tweak that mode some more so like I said everything's up to date on it um, the visual you know assistant for the ground landing is turned on so I want to take it up now I'm just gonna fly it out a little ways we'll include some footage and then call it back to home and see how accurate it is at landing so I'm gonna go ahead and start recording some footage on the drone to include here because it's gonna get uh, out of sight of my head camera really quick so go ahead and unlock the props and of course the obstacle avoidance is beeping. I do have the obstacle avoidance on. Uh, I don't always fly with it on. Pretty annoying and loud that is. And uh, go ahead now and uh, just go ahead and manually just take off. It's a bit of a breeze at times today from right to left, but you know the drone really does well with that. We got some rain moving here in here soon, so I want to get this up and get this done here today before the rain moves in. I'm not gonna take it out too far. We just want to see how you know accurate it is at finding the position. It doesn't really matter how far you fly the drone. You just want to get it, I don't remember the exact distance, but you want to get it out farther a little ways because I think if it's I think, I could be wrong, if it's relatively close to home, it will just land and it won't uh, actually come back and try to land in the home spot. It'll just land if you're really, really close. Okay, just fly out to the edge of my subdivision here. We've got some new construction out there. That would be good enough for this first test. I think I had the return to home set. I thought I had it set at 166 feet for the return home height. So let's go ahead and hold down the uh, home button here. And it should turn around. It's going to raise up a little bit. Tell me there could be some deviation between the landing point and home point. Um, I don't exactly remember why it says that. Here's turning around, it's facing where I am. I'm gonna fly up there by that bunch of trees up here. That's where I'm near that. Here it is. I don't know how well that's gonna show up in my head cam, if it's gonna show up even at all, but it's zipping back here. And I try to remember to aim the camera down here so that uh, you can see it as it's approaching the the launch pad. Let's go ahead and uh, tilt that down. Let's see how accurate it is. Now there's not a whole lot of clearance between the camera. Uh, sorry if this is wobbly. I need to back up some. My head cam can get kind of wobbly when I'm moving around. So I would, you know, if you're landing, I would probably try not to land with the camera facing straight down, especially if you're landing on a rocky road or something because, you know, you could bump the camera. I'm going to leave it down here. I'm going to try to level it out here right before it lands. Let's see if it makes an adjustment here. Sometimes it'll make a little bit of adjustment. I'm going to put the camera back up now. 
That's gonna be a little bit off here. That's about the that's about the most that I saw in a previous test. That's fine, in my opinion. But you know, some I've had it land right on the tarmac here, um, which is obviously ideal. Let's go ahead and move it over here. <sighs> And let's do it one more test here. We don't need to do too many of these. We don't want to make the video too long. <laughs> because as you know, my review was really, really long. Let's go ahead and unlock the props here. And that should uh, mark the, uh, the location again. Let's go ahead and take it out. We'll take it out over to the right here this time. We're going to go ahead and do an automatic takeoff. Of course, like I said, it's beeping. Basically, the rear sensors are, are seeing me. I believe the stuff out in front is a little too far. Let's see if I got the gimbal tilted up all the way, I do. Now I'm filming this in 4K at 60 frames per second. I'm not too worried about the footage today because this is more of a turn to home accuracy test. But I'm most likely this video will be in 1080p. I don't. Like I said, I'm not really trying to show off the camera today. I just want to see how good is this. Uh, returning to the land, especially with the visual aid assistance of the accuracy landing. You know, uh, the you know my previous Altel was XSP, and of course it it uh, did not have that, and it was always pretty good. But it's just using GPS uh, for the accuracy. And I can still see it out there. I'm over the uh, subdivision next to me. Fight out a little ways here. I'm only about, you know, 600 feet out now. Not very far. But far enough, and I'm still within line of sight. I can see it sitting over that tree back there. So, you know, I'm well within the FAA guidelines there. I can see where I'm at, and I'm only up. Uh, you know, I'm up 59, uh, 60 feet, I'm not up very high. So it should raise up. Let's go ahead and call it back now. And it's gonna raise up now. Let's see how high it does go. I thought I had it set to about 166 feet. It's at 151, 55, 63, 66. Bam, right on 166 feet. It's gonna turn around now, it's gonna fly back. Now many people are easily getting, I've seen people take this drone out four miles is what just advertised. Here it is coming back, it's really hauling butt. And uh, you know, it doesn't, like I said, I mean, if you're gonna fly it out, you know, a few hundred feet, you know, or, you know, or take it out four miles, return to home should work just fine either way. Because the actual accuracy is gonna be First, the GPS. It, right now it is 130 feet up. And let's aim the camera down. But as it gets closer to the ground here, it's gonna start using the, uh, the visual aid, the two cameras on the bottom to actually look at the ground and then see. And there you can see it's correcting as it's starting to see. It should be seeing the launch pad. And that's going to aid in that accuracy, but the GPS can't quite get that accurate. Let's see where it lands. I'm going to go ahead and rotate the camera up now. Again, a few feet off. I mean, that's not bad in my opinion. I don't think it wants to make any really drastic changes at the last second. Um, but yesterday, I had it land right on the H. I mean, it was. I mean, literally within inches. This is pretty much the two we did here today is about the farthest I've had it. And I mean a few feet off, that's not a big deal. Uh, but I, I've had it land right on top of the H. I kind of wish it would today just to show you how it can be that precise. But I mean, I don't have a problem with that myself. Um, I don't use return to home that often. Uh, I usually manually land it or I, if I call it back, I'll cancel it and land it myself. Not that I don't trust it, I just, I like to fly, so. You know, I like to do it myself, but I have used a turn to home on all my drones. You know, especially if I'm showing it off to somebody, you know, people like to see that smart features of a drone actually landing itself from where it took off. That is really a cool feature. Probably the biggest thing people like about GPS other than its position holdability 
it's just the way it can, a drone can come back and land itself. So overall, the accuracy is pretty good on that. Like I said, I've had it even better. I've had it within inches. So don't take this test as a, you know, a, a definite proof of its accuracy because I've had it land all right on the H. It just depends on the conditions and how it's coming down and where it's, you know, the angle and the wind, stuff like that. And there is some wind today, especially up a few hundred feet. All right, guys, so that should wrap up this test. I said I plan to have one more video with testing the waypoints coming up here. Don't know exactly when, but at some point I'll try to do that. And I've got a few things coming. I've got the Bugs 3 Pro coming today, and a little uh, Mavic Air clone toy like. I plan to get those reviewed here as soon as I can. The Bugs 3 Pro may be a little while. I want to get it tested some, and I've got some other work to do. So it may be a little while on the Bugs 3 Pro. So that wraps it up, guys. And be sure to subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Uh, make Make sure you press the little bell so you're notified whenever I post a video because it's so easy to forget to do that and then all of a sudden you realize oh I missed five videos. So be sure you do that and as always guys have a good day. The power of the dark side, side, side.